I think I believe about you, but I want to encourage you right now that no matter how much money you have in the bank, no matter how good things are going for you right now, you and I need the favor of God. Favor means the blessing, the master of the universe on your side, opening doors for you and closing doors of a devouring lion that wants to destroy your life. That's what he does. Boom, shakala. Open one, close another one. When the favor of God is on your life. So here's the essence before another word of the Lord comes to you. What I found out in researching it is that the issue wasn't what Cain brought as an offering. It was his heart attitude. He was worshiping God in the outer, but not from the inner. Listen to me, everybody. Hear my heart. Pastor Dan, I don't think you've ever said this before in opening. You talked about the apostles and the pastors and the evangelists. And, and, and our assignment is to grow everybody up. As we grow up, we need to grow up. We need to speak from a place of integrity and genuineness and falling on our face before we ask anybody else to, amen? So from that maturity, we encourage everyone else to let's be more like Jesus. Mature everybody. Well, one of the ways you mature is you're sensitive to Holy Spirit and you bring worship with a hard attitude, not just a traditional attitude. I'm just going to stand here and wait for the praise and worship team and then we're going to listen to a message and we're going to go home. No, it's not about that. This is a training center of being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and doing what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. So here's what I'm sensing. I hear these words, everything bows to you. But you know what? Cain's attitude did not bow to God and he didn't get the favor and the blessing of God. But Abel came and he, his heart attitude was, if I can say it this way, oh my God, the creator of the universe? I get to approach the creator of the universe? I get to be in the presence of the greatest one that has ever been and ever walked on this earth? I'm in the presence of the master that created me? There's a sobriety of privilege that the Lord wants to bring us into. Because when we have a sobriety of privilege, we operate from a spirit of honor and we bring Him what He deserves. And until we do, until we cooperate with the Spirit of God that's saying, you know what? Shannon, get out of your seat and come to the altar. That's what I'm, I'm giving you a practical example. No, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling in a practical example, you're willing, that's great, of being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. How does He want me to worship today? What kind of honoring posture is the Holy Spirit telling me to bring? The God of the universe deserves every ounce of our heart. It's a process. But the more we practice that, the more the favor of God comes on our life. And we are so glad that we forgot about what other people were thinking. And we actually worshipped Him the way He was asking us to on Sunday morning. scripture this morning, the word of the Lord came, correlating with my brother's word. 
we built an we built a sacrifice we built an offering and lay our sacrifices on it and we wait in the morning and it correlates to Habakkuk 2 1 we're watchmen then we become watchmen on that altar waiting as we've built an altar here with our very lives our very posture becomes the altar and putting that sacrifice on it with our posture but as I meditated on that and waited for the word of the Lord to come for you I heard the Lord say that he wants to restore things to you and it came through the song sung by my sister here in this team they were singing the word of the Lord over you uh, during worship and I saw some of you just kind of it was hard for you to join in uh, because the enemy has come and he's grabbed you by your throats uh, through the form of circumstances in your life but God said I am a God of restoration I am a God of restoration and today today say today with me say it with power today God wants to restore honor to his people he wants to restore voices back to you the sound the vibration back to your voices where your voice has been taken away from you you've been shut down I see uh, mothers and fathers where you've been dishonored in your very own homes you've been dishonored and God says I'm restoring your honor back to you I want you to lift your hands I, be I believe this word applies to every person in here there has been dishonor spoken and it's by the enemy our fight is not against flesh and blood so I don't want you to think of a person it's the enemy that comes he hates he hates your God and he hates you but as we have sung there's something greater everything has to bow to the name of Jesus Christ so God says today I'm coming down here he said today I'm restoring honor to my people I'm restoring honor to the Apostles I'm restoring honor to the prophets I'm restoring honor to the mothers to the fathers to the people my people and you're gonna get your sound back and it's gonna be a vibration and you're kind of gonna come together in unity and you're gonna make a sound a powerful sound and you're gonna destroy those satanic works in this area I'm so glad you have your hand up it's for the people that the younger generation here where you've been dishonored so can we go back into that one song and I want to sing it again and I want you to sing it with power because this is just a place of receiving okay so I want you to know what is breaking in the spirit we were singing something's breaking a lie a lie is being dismantled something's breaking but I want you to know what is breaking it's the thing that's the assignment that came at your life it's the assignment that came at your voice I want you to sing it with power I want you to sing knowing today when you leave I have received restoration for my life God himself has spoken and said today I have restored honor to you mothers and fathers today I have restored you to a place of holiness and today you can walk out with power and release it over others so we're gonna go I want you to go for it I want to I want you to punch through that wall amen
bring restoration. You bring restoration. restoration. Father, we thank you for being a God of restoration. Jesus, you're the great redeemer. We thank you, Father. We agree with your word, uh, and we refuse to surrender, lifting up your word. We choose to say you are true and faithful, and we celebrate you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, why don't you go find somebody, give them a hug, uh, bless somebody, encourage somebody. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wow. God is the God of the shout, and he's the God of the whisper. I think we had the shout today. I think I'm a little hot. Uh, I'm ringing here. Uh, you can come up, V, and let's see which, how we're going to go here. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I want to... Uh, I don't know if anybody... Uh, thought what the Spirit of the Lord said through me was different than what came through Leslie. I want to put those two pieces together. She talked about restoring honor. Here's what I know, and uh, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, last week, and I don't know if I shared this last week, or I started to, and I may have forgotten to, it's my Monday morning dilemma when I go back into my private place with the Lord, and I remember something that I started to say, but I didn't finish it. Um, it's like, ah, I hate that. So I don't know if I finished it or not because I didn't go back and play because I was headed to India, but India didn't work out because of paperwork issues, so I get to be with you, which is awesome. Uh, so reschedule that to the February 28th. But I was driving down Main Street and uh, worship, and, and, and uh, out of my heart came, I will not surrender. I will not surrender. So I want to use that phrase as a connection between what I was saying and what Leslie's saying. She talked about negative circumstances coming against you, and if I'm going to use the, the uh, cultural word of dissing you and devaluing you. What I have found is negative circumstances are designed for you and I to devalue God. In other words, the enemy wants us to blame God for our negative circumstances. And so we stop honoring him in the way he deserves to be honored. We stop paying attention to him because we've got an attitude towards God. Now that attitude that go back to the story of Cain, Cain had an attitude towards God because God says, Cain, you know, if you just do what's right, you know, you'd have the favor and the blessing. 
And Cain, instead of repenting and yielding to the correction of the Lord, he just kept going his own way. And we know the rest of the story. Most of us, he went out to the wilderness and he was cursed. And that was after, after he killed his brother. But what I'm sensing between what Leslie said and what I said is God does want to do a restoration. But one of the things he wants to put inside of us when we talk about the fivefold maturing us and equipping us is this attitude that I will not surrender. I will not surrender my faith. I will not, what does that mean? I will not surrender my praise. I will not surrender my worship. I will not res, uh, surrender my love for God. He deserves it no matter what is going on in our lives. End of story. And there's this, there, there's this uh, inside that wants, that God wants to, uh, <laughs> I almost said ruach, which is a Hebrew word for spirit. But by his spirit, he wants to put inside of us that attitude that God is for me, no matter what it looks like. God is with me, no matter what it looks like. Because what ends up happening is uh, we get offended with God. God did not do what I expected him to do. He, he didn't do things the way I wanted him to do it. And I believe some of those things are a test to find out really what's inside of us. It is our worship. David said, I am not going, King David, I am not going to bring an offering to God unless it costs me something. And there's a place where we come out of uh, immaturity in, into maturity where I don't care what it costs me. I don't care if life seems fair or unfair, whether I'm being loved, mistreated, persecuted, hardship. I want to grow into the place of Apostle Paul that says, I delight in persecution. I delight in hardship. Do you know how less offended we would be with God and people if, if we really allowed that to develop inside of us. I mean, we got a book out there called Living Unoffendable. There's 10 of them. We, we bought them at wholesale so you could get them half price. They're $10. I highly recommend you get it because one, so, uh, one lady came to me and she says, Pastor, I didn't really realize how offended I was and how offendable I am. You know what it actually says? I'm not going to cut it short because of the time. But it actually says in the NLT translation of the Bible in 1 Corinthians describing love, it says love is not offended. So when you're offended because someone didn't, and here's the root issue of offense, I didn't get what I wanted when I wanted it. From God, people, the weather, I didn't get what I wanted when I wanted so I've got an attitude. I'm irritated and I'm going to meditate on the whatever the negative thing is. And when you meditate on the negative thing, that irritation, which is a seed to offense, grows into offense. And the next thing you know, there's a fence between you and people and even God. And you, we're not fully connecting and walking in the love for him or other people. And so the issue is not Chuck, Mary or any one of you, or the person at the grocery store, or the guy driving too slow. You know, I said to my wife this morning, getting ready, you know the easiest thing in the world, I think, to do is be offended. I mean, I am, my eyes are starting to open how many t opportunities I get on a daily basis to be irritated with someone and meditate on that and then be offended and poison my own soul. And that's what we're doing. So I just want to clear, I, I just want to encourage you that God does want to cause restoration. There's a great prophet that came to a widow. And she thought, it's all over. All my resources are gone. I'm preparing to die. My last meal, this is it. Whenever we say this is it, we're not in faith. Faith isn't anywhere around us. 
But then the faith man walks in and you, the audacity of me walking into your house and you're fixing your last meal. And I say, uh, here's the plan. You're going to make some food right now and you're going to feed me first. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, she probably already has an attitude to God and the audacity of the man of God, so to speak, who walk in and say, hey, why don't you feed me first with what you got, which isn't enough and you're going to die, so just give it to me. She stopped honoring God in her negative circumstances. She chose to lay down faith. She didn't have the attitude where she refused to res refused to surrender her faith. That's the audacity God wants us to walk in. Where I don't care what it looks like. I refuse to surrender my faith. I will be like Moses looking at the Red Sea impossibility. And I will hear the Spirit of God lift up the Word of God. And the Red Sea will open. But here's the next level of maturity. Even if it doesn't open, I will lift up the Word of God. Because He deserves the honor. And He deserves that faithfulness. Because He's faithful. I'm telling you, when we grow into that place, watch out. That spirit of fear is all over the devil because you're walking in a freedom that nothing is intimidating you. There's nothing he can do. I got a new song. I was sharing my chorus with Leslie and my wife at the dinner table last night. Yes, she got serenaded. Good food and serenade. Don't you want to come over again? my new chorus is I think I shared it last week but re re repetition is good there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you nothing there's nothing you can do Chuck to stop me from loving you now we need to point it up. There's nothing you can do or don't do that can stop me from loving you. 2023, new liberty and new prosperity. And it starts in your soul. And it starts with some new attitudes that the Holy Spirit wants to plan in us. And then we start working them. We start working them. And we experience the self-deliverance that... Leslie was talking about on Friday night. That's filmed, and you can go back and watch it. It was a little cold Friday night, wasn't it? It was minus a hundred. Come on, check this out. It wasn't in here. That's a good. Yeah, that was good. That was real good, Lisa. She said it. I didn't. Uh, I'm into minus a hundred and seven degrees on Mount Washington. What do you do? Just go outside and turn into an ice cube? Icicle, boom. You can come up anytime. I love partnership, and you can just come up and do whatever you, God tells you to do. Here's what I know. Is God is a master restorer. But what I've learned, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Leslie, there's a part that we play in the restoration. He gives a word. He, the prophet gave the word to the widow. She trusted the prophet. She did it. She had more than she had before because she trusted the prophet. The oil multiplied and she sold the oil and she went from nothing to everything she needed until the famine was over. It's amazing when you listen to the Spirit of God and you trust Him what can happen. We just got to keep listening and keep listening and keep listening and keep listening and not quit. The Bible says, hold fast. What does hold fast mean? I'm looking for a specimen to grab. It means for some of your la ladies... You relate to this. 
You hold fast. Nobody's taking your pocketbook. Right? Come on, let's, let's. Did you say careful? <laughs> See the attitude? That's what you need to say. When unbelief and doubt and fear come to you, you say, careful. You ain't taking my faith. I ain't surrendering my faith. To the point whether it brings a breakthrough or not, God deserves our faith. No matter what is going on in our life, end of story, draw the line, done. Man, the doors we could close to the enemy with that attitude, I believe, is phenomenal. So what I started to say before, there's a process of restoration. I believe this lady had to cooperate with the Word of God. So what is the Word of God? Is the Word of God... He brings the word of God. I started to say, he doesn't waste words. He brings the word of God for you to hear something, for you to respond. Some of you have heard me say that before. There's a response. The praise and worship team is a catalyst for us to respond and join with them. Any preaching or words, even prophetic words, uh, are, are designed for us to embrace them and work them. The Bible says, according to Apostle uh, Paul, he said to Timothy when he was down and out and depressed because everybody's behavior was negative, he decided he would have a negative behavior and just be depressed and be discouraged. And Apostle Paul says, whoa, I love you and I understand. But he said, uh, war a good warfare with the word that you've been given. In other words, God is looking for us to partner with him to move mountains and change things. So I, I'll present a possible step of restoration with some of the things that have been said today. Did anything quicken in your heart? Is the Lord saying, are you, are you, are you being quickened in your heart to say, God, forgive me? I recognize what he's saying. See, when you respond in that way, that's called repentance. You, d you decide to stop living life dishonoring God because of negative circumstances and you start honoring him and and listening to him and following him and giving him your heart no matter what that's that's what repent means stop doing the old way and live the new way which I'm describing right now is everybody with me are you with me are you with me we are in the world we are not supposed to be of the world so if we're responding to negative situations like somebody that doesn't know Jesus, we're not on God's page. And we need to say, God, forgive me. I repent. I choose to turn around and live by your spirit. I trust me. Help me. That's one of the steps to restoration, to restoring. One of the things you can say, when you find out that God is a God of restoration, Jesus is a redeemer, and you just hear me say that there's some things that we may have to do to cooperate like the widow to see restoration in our life, what, so what we should learn from that, just that little 15 second blip, is God. My finances need restoring. My marriage needs restoring. My body needs restoring. My spiritual health needs restoring. My soul is a mess. I live in anxiety and torment. And according to scripture, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So what do I need to do for restoration? What's my part? Isn't it great to know what Leslie said? God wants to restore. He's a restorer. That's exciting, isn't it? I said, to, I said to Leslie the other day, I said, you know what word really needs some spice that most people don't get inspired by? It's the word maintenance. See, you just proved. No white hankies waving. Nobody's saying, I love that word, maintenance. downtown Springfield going to the church building in the red light district of Springfield where we were in the fourth floor take elevator sanctuary getting off the highway I can remember it like it yesterday God said the difference between life and death is maintenance 
So respond to the word of God. Whatever she's about to say, respond to it. Say, God, what's my part? I'm partnering with you for this good plan. I'm not all alone. I'm with God Almighty. But you have a, a part to play, and God wants to equip you and strengthen you and encourage you so you see what he has in store for your life. Your choices, your steps, your responses make a really big difference. I feel so much going on in this room. It was so, um, I don't want to say distracting because I was paying attention to my dear friend's words. <laughs> His, his words have power and can really open up this realm. Um, part of what I do is just bring attention to what's going on in, in the spirit realm, you know. And so he's, he just cracked a realm open and things are going all over this room. So I was watching and I just, I want to bring attention to um, personally what God's saying to some of you. Are you okay with that? Are you good with that, Pastor? So the uh, attention and affection of the Lord is on you, sir, and and you as well. So the minute uh, Pastor was speaking of ears, um, I heard for you, I saw a, a circle being drawn around you, and I saw the Lord pointing to your ears, and I heard uh, a sound from heaven say, let those who have ears hear and bring understanding. And then I saw the attention go to your heart and um, Jesus, the, I was, we were speaking earlier and I was saying to them, but it, then uh, the arrow went to you. And um, what we were saying is the disciples always said to Jesus, why do you talk in, in parables? And it, it, and Jesus said, it is the language of the heart. And so for you, I feel you are uh, going into this beautiful season of going deeper into um, understanding with the Lord. But I see because it's highlighted on your heart, it has been a desire of your heart. And you've been asking in different ways uh, with the Lord, like, I want to understand. I want to hear you. I want to know you. And let me just have your hand. I feel the Lord just pulling on you like that. And so you are going to see. You are going to hear. But there's an understanding. And it's going to, the Lord's just giving you this big drink of water of understanding. But I also see uh, you speaking it out over others as well. But I see the attention and affection of the Lord on you. It, um, I could see uh, from the front row, I could see the Lord highlighting you. So there's something beautiful in this new season of your life that God's going to do uh, for you, that you are going in. I see a spiritual door um, from heaven opening an opportunity um, from Jesus for you to walk through. And um, all the words that were spoken by pastor were very significant for you. Um, the Lord's giving you some beautiful opportunities. So I really want to bless uh, your heart and the understanding of your heart uh, to walk through those with success. There's somebody over here also. I hope you didn't leave. You should never leave church early. <laughs> it's a good part. <laughs> it's all, well, there was a gentleman over here. I think he might have just probably stepped out. With the tan um, sweater. Well, he'll come back. Tell him, tell your friends to come back. When you were um, up on the platform, uh, you had two um, very large I'm, angelic arms come down. And uh, it is such a ginormous angel. I cannot see anything other than huge, uh, just huge arms. It's new. It's, it's very new. You did not have them. I could tell you right now, you didn't have them before, uh, even last month. It's new. It just came right down. And it's very significant for, um, it's, it means two. So there's two different uh, places you're going. Um, and in each section of the arm, so one part of the arm and one part of the arm is for helps 
for you. And they're so large and so strong and so all-encompassing around you. Let me tell you, you got nothing to fear. Nothing to fear, and you have a lot of um, success. Like your steps, of course the Lord orders our steps. And we don't worship angels, and I'll say it every time I talk about angels. Um, but you have so much heavenly help and you are surrounded so much um, it was a very beautiful thing to watch there's a lot of angelic uh, presentation in this room right now so to me that says um, God is sending you know help for for many of you and so you know just like my friend in the front row there's help for you know for different assignments there's new assignments for people and God sends angels for different reasons but a lot of times when you have something new on your life it's uh, for you also um, Shannon there's a there's new assignments for you and new angelic presentation to help you I see a lot of helps in this room so I want all of you because I feel that pull right now. Yeah, good, Lisa. She lifts, She puts her hand. Put your hand in the receiving position. I'm going to say, get in the receiving position and just pull. I want to bless the seasons that you're in. Some of you are getting just ready to move right out of them and into the next. I, I hear... Um, like almost an intercession in this room, like, God, when, am I, when is this gonna be over? When is this gonna be over? Is this ever gonna be over? And the Lord says, yes, yes. It couples with the word spoken right out of the portal of heaven. Please go back and rewatch this, can they? Is that, is that an opportunity? Yes, uh, go back and rewatch it. And, and literally every word spoken, say, I partner with it. I partner with it. I make choices. I partner. When you partner with words spoken from heaven, it's a hammer. It says in the book of Revelation that there's an angel and he raises his right hand towards heaven. So we're going to do that right now. And we're going to say, no more delay. That's for you. No more is. Are you waiting? Yes. Well, I, I know that this next season is going to be very, very prosperous for me. Um, God promised me many properties my family and I to expand our portfolio and to be just a blessing to many people as well as our family and to extend the blessings that he have sold upon us to our extended family as well. So she's a kingdom financer, but for when I, when we say no more delay, it's no more delay, no more delay. So we, no more delay, say it with power, say it with faith. We just heard about faith. Uh, this this couple here also the attention and the when I look back the attention and the affection of the Lord is just all around you and so the Lord just is, is releasing um, just this blessing of it's like a, a boost for of abundance in this next season that you're walking in and your feet are very highlighted um, so there's there's a, a like an assurance to your steps that if you're questioning you know some decisions God says when you partner in intercession with him you'll have a knowing that's going to rise up inside of you and you're going to just you're going to know that you know it's like you know it in your knower that's what I hear so there's going to be no doubt nothing's going to come in and shake you but partner in intercession with the Lord with your decisions Pastor, did you have anything? Christy, here in his presence, he's playing it, I think. Can we go back to where we were in worship before we close and do birthday Sunday? Can we do that? I hear that real strong here in his presence. The, there's been a lot of softening and what you said, cracks. Um, op open um, fissures. Fizz, what's the word, Noah? Fissures. F-I-S-S-U-R-E. Fissures. Yeah, that's what I see right now, um, uh, of refreshing water. 
uh, coming through like rocks. This, this, this. So I don't want to miss any other corporate ministry other than what the prayer team might do, which I, I don't sense that much other than because so much is happening here where the Lord is really, I, I feel here, here's, if I could condense something, there's a, there's a coming up out of the old into the new is what I'm sensing. And even Friday night, the coming up out of, of I'm, a, I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. I can praise my way through. I can pray my way through. And although we're here for each other, we never want anybody to get in a place of isolation. It's just like, hey, you have the power. You have the authority. There's some things that, weapons, tools that you can use. And, um, and, and, and some real serious new liberty and prosperity for a soul and outward that is supposed to happen for this year if you cooperate with the Spirit of God. Faith in Him, no matter what it's been for your life, is really... God, help me walk in the faith that moves mountains. God, help me to walk in the faith that moves mountains. Help me not, she said a phrase that, that was resonating in my heart the other night. What you tolerate dominates in your life. What you tolerate. If you tolerate unbelief, it's going to dominate. If you tolerate spirit of fear, it's going to dominate. Whatever you tolerate, if you tolerate an unloving attitude, if you tolerate an un a a offended heart, it will dominate and destroy your life. Whatever negative thing you tolerate will dominate and destroy your life. And that's the, the last thing that I want to see happen. Choose, close your eyes and you don't even have to stand up. Go ahead, just give them a chorus or something. Let's just, just a, a minute or two here. Father, I thank you for every heart in this place. I release new refreshing, new grace, new love, new wisdom, new revelation, refreshing water by your spirit, Father, a new hunger and thirst for righteousness, a, a repentance that causes restoration, a new maturity, Father. It causes new overcoming testimonies, Father. Let them experience the cool refreshness, refreshing of your spirit, Father. I bless every heart and every body. I speak restoration spiritually, soulishly, physically, financially, and relationally to everybody in this place and in the camera who's watching through the cameras right now. I re release a spirit of restoration. I, I release uh, revelations that they've never had that would cause them to do things they've never done to cause new restoration in their life. Father, I, I Father, open the hearts open the eyes the ears the hear and and they would know strategies that you would want them to walk in to see restoration like the widow fresh faith wisdom I speak life over this congregation in the name of Jesus I rebuke the spirit of murder I rebuke the spirit of death that has come in different ways in everybody's life to steal, kill, and destroy. I rebuke that spirit of murder. I bind it up in the name of Jesus and say, you can't have my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. You can't have them. I stand in the gap for them right now as an intercessor and say, spirit of murder, you cannot uh, uh, operate with the agenda of Satan. I rebuke you, resist you, and renounce you and come against you in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against anyone in this house or anyone watching this camera is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that over them, no matter what it looks like in Jesus' name. I lose 
shackles of disappointment and discouragement and depression right now in the name of Jesus. I command prison doors to blow open in the name of Jesus. That's right. Come on, you're, you're with it. A little bit stronger. Come on. Break the chain. I loose, I bind up every work of darkness, and I loose life and light. Break the chains, break the chains, break the chains. I loose every heart and every mind from the spirit of heart that's been hurt by the unloving spirit right now. Break the chains, break the chains, break the chains, have your way. Say this with me. Let's say what the Word of God says, that Jesus is true and faithful. Can you stand to your feet? Let's make a declaration right now. Let's make a declaration that broke the chains off of me and the lead blanket off of me. This is I, I just started to meditate on and celebrate. Let's go back full circle to what I said. Meditating on and celebrating the nature of God is a chain-breaking, self-delivering experience. That whenever you're down or feel, uh, feel weighted down, this, this is uh, one of the strategies to deliver you. Say with me, Jesus Christ is true and faithful. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is my light. And He is my salvation. He is my deliverer. He is my way maker. He fills me with life and love and wisdom from above. And no weapon formed against me will prosper against me because of who my Father is, who my Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is. I will see and I will taste and I will know the good plan uh, that God has preordained for me uh, and I will do every preordained good work uh, that God has preordained me to do uh, I am an overcomer by the blood of Jesus uh, and the word of my testimony I break off every chain uh, of disappointment uh, discouragement uh, dismay uh, despair, depression, I break it off of me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. How? How? Okay. Hey, worshiper. Okay, stop. See how willing they are just to keep, they just keep you know what? I just saw a picture of a red carpet. You guys are just so willing. Just, we just came rolling out the red carpet, rolling out the red carpet until pastor says stop rolling out the red carpet. Give him a hand for serving you today. <laughs> you can turn on the lights. Thank you. Amen. Hey, can you sit down just for a few seconds? We're going to celebrate birthdays today. But before we celebrate birthdays, could we celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ was born miraculously? I didn't get too many. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was born miraculously. You, for you. For you. <laughs> There's the horn. <laughs> we got it. I knew we'd get the horn in there sometime. <laughs> I knew it was coming. So because of that, could we just take a moment... Uh, and just <clears throat> worship him right now and giving and just be thankful. Father, I pray. 
Help us be what Lisa calls us to be, extravagant givers. This Lifestream Church is an extravagant giving congregation. So, Father, I thank you for them. I thank you for leading and guiding them. I thank you that we're going to honor you financially right now, and we're going to honor you in the house situation, and and we're going to honor the prophetess for being here uh, with us the last few days, and again today, we're just going to honor, 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 because that's who we are in Jesus' name, amen. The banner's up there. You guys know what to do when you see your banner. Thank you very, very much. It's very encouraging when you cooperate and continue in this. We appreciate it deeply. the cool story you'll remember this story pastor dan lisa and some of those that were around back then in 1952 when we started um <laughs> a little, just a little sense of humor um we had someone come in a guest minister leslie and he had been on the road for like 10 days and he came in and the spirit of god in praise and worship i just felt impressed that we were supposed to pray for him he, and uh, so he ended up laying on the ground. And then I told the congregation, I feel like we're supposed to give him an offering of $500. The guy did nothing. <laughs> he just came in, got minister two, laid down. Dan Hardaway was his name. And laid down, got minister two. We gave him an offering for $500. And it capped off his trip. That's the kind of spirit that Lisa talks about in the, this house. That we honor. It's not based on anything else but what the Spirit of God is saying. So can we just bless you? Can we pray for you before we leave? <clears throat> can you join with me? And Absolutely. I want to say I travel all over the world. I know this has been said before, but I have that blessing and that opportunity to travel. Um, and I'm on the, on the road probably every week with ministry. And I have... It is so rare to encounter a congregation and a group of believers that carry what you do. And I, I want to extend that honor to you. You guys are, you have kingdom honor and you have kingdom principles. And I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but I feel the genuine love and koinonia that the New Testament speaks of. So... I just want to bless you, and I want you to recognize that it's so rare to encounter what is in this house and in this congregation and this apostolic couple that leads you. But you carry it as well. So just in your smiles, your hugs, your greetings, the way your eyes light up, you, I mean, you can't lie about that, right? I, I know. <laughs> I know. But thank you so much for all the love. <laughs> right now, right now, I got my answer. One of the best things to do is ask questions when you don't know, and, and as you're asking questions, a lot of times the Holy Spirit will give you clarity. So I thank you, Father. Dan and Lisa, come on up here. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father that out of her comes a spirit of life that resurrects the dead in the name of Jesus. Spiritually, 
soulishly, physically, financially, and relationally. We join with you, Father, and bless her. So the Lord showed me, um, I think it's great that she wear these outstanding shoes because I, I heard them in the earth. I heard them doing the reverberation as you walked, but it was bringing chaos to the enemy's camp because I saw that what was happening is as you were walking and going to different nations, that reverberation was just all running into each other and the enemy didn't know where to go to like entrap you or to follow you or to target you. So I really felt in the days to come as the momentum of your, your um, feet go and that reverberation uh, travels through the earth that the enemy is just not going to be able to keep up. He's not going to know where to go because you are, there is such a, a, a commanding reverberation coming through you and your in feet. In the camp of the Jesus enemy, name. I hear the talk and they're saying, she freaks us out. <laughs> she totally freaks us out. Amen. That's in the word in, that I hear. Um, I had something else in my spirit. Hold on just a second. Uh, did you have something before I just finish? Just refreshing. Just refreshing, a refreshing. Father, at least refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. Father God, as she is emptied out, you will fill her up. Father, I thank you as she has been diligent to empty out the well. You will fill it up afresh and anew. Father God, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We come and agree with that, and, physical and we release it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Leslie, I heard the Lord say, keep your eye on the horizon, because what I'm about to do is a whole new thing, and he, and he knows you're ready. Amen. Excellent. Amen. Excellent. And we have that recorded, too. I'm going to say, the horizon, the last few days since you've been here, <laughs> has been, I took a a picture of it on the way home when you got here since Mary said it was on fire and these last few days even on the way home me and my wife were saying wow it was like fire cool that's awesome awesome amen amen are you done I'm yeah, it's the word Sunday. fun it's the word fun that was in my you're gonna have fun you're gonna have fun one of the things she said Friday night is we're gonna have some fun tonight yeah, right everybody yeah. and, and uh, that that's Look for that. Look for that. Cooperate with that um, because it destroys religious spirits when you operate in that place. It's, it's great. Awesome. Excellent. Hey, are you ready to celebrate birthdays? Amen. Come on, let's do it. Whose birthday?